Welcome back, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is video lesson five. And as I promised, this is video lesson five, right? I'm not losing my mind. Yeah, Miss Mr. Cow, we are uh, at Mr. Cow's crib right now. Currently, it is almost midnight. So I apologize if I make some snafus along the way because I'm trying to keep my eyes open. This whole doing work in the middle of the night crap is not my style, ladies and gentlemen. It's just not working for me. I do so much better teaching during the day. All right, so anyway. But nowadays, I'm momming during the day. You know what I'm saying? So I have mom during the day, teacher at night. Yeah, buddy. All right, so anyway, here we go. Uh, let's rock and roll. So I told you in video lesson four, we went over some homework problems. It was a long video. I apologize. I did not intend for it to be like 30 minutes long. But I wanted to make sure we went over the ones that a lot of you were expressing that you were having challenges with. So hopefully that cleared some things up. Hopefully you were able to take your work out, go over it, fix it, have your oh moments. And if not, I'm sorry, my darlings, I'm doing the best I can. But none of you have really communicated anything with me on that one. So um, hopefully as you look at video lesson four and you go over your homework, it answers some questions. Okay. All right. So. Let's take a look here, video lesson five. Um, the homework assignment that was due today, no, I'm sorry, tomorrow, which is Wednesday, um, for this week, your first assignment, was to try these two problems. Okay, these two problems I'm calling a review sheet. And we're gonna do this exactly like we do it in class. You're getting two problems, and then on the quiz, quote unquote, you're getting two problems that look exactly like this. The one additional perk to this is you now have a video. Hi, this is the video. Video lesson five in your disposal, right in the palm of your hands that you can play and watch that explains how to do it step by step. Okay, so it's like an open notebook with an extra advantage of a video to look at, literally going over the two problems. So the worksheet that goes with this one is a quiz. Let me see if I can pull that one up. I had it, I had it, I had it, I had it. Here it is. So the quiz, and you'll see the wording is exactly the same. The radius of a right circular cylinder is increasing at the rate of two inches per second. This one's increasing at a rate of five inches per second. Same as that questions. Literally, same two questions, just different numbers. Okay, so let's rock and roll. Let's jump right in, ladies and gents. We have a right circular cylinder. So step one, draw a picture and label it. Okay, uh, the radius is increasing. They tell me it's a rate. Okay, rate, rate of change, inches per second, miles per hour, feet per minute. Those all imply, is it a R or is it a derivative of R? It's the derivative of R. This would be your dr dt, very good. While the height, okay, so here's my radius and here's my height is decreasing, uh-oh, be careful. And here's another rate. So this is not H, this is what, if it's a rate of change of H? DH, DT, very good. I wanna know what's the rate of the volume. I don't wanna know what's V. I wanna know the rate of change of the volume. So that would be D, V over DT of the cylinder. Do you hear my husband snoring? Totally snoring, do you hear this? So will I work and make money? He, he might have heard me because he stopped. Maybe he stopped breathing. Should I check? I'm kidding. He's totally breathing. Okay, so anyway. Rate of change. Sorry, I can't help it. It's the charisms. Um, rate of change of volume is dV over dt. And then here we go. They give me a radius of 9 and a height of 15. So, draw the picture, label it. Step 2. We know we want to find. You want to know what the worst part is about all of that right now? Is he left me having to listen to his crappy music. All right, so anyway, what do we know? We know the radius is nine inches. We know the height is 15. We know the rate of change of radius. How do I write that? The rate of change of R. It's not R, it's dir over dt. And it's increasing, so that means is it positive or negative? It's positive two inches per second. And then the rate of change of the height is not h, it's 
DHDT, you see, when I tell you about the snoring and the stories about snoring, that's what I'm talking about. The man can snore. Okay, that one's decreasing, so it's not positive. It's negative four inches per second. You gotta watch that increasing, decreasing. That's the curveball I always warn you of. Okay, what do we wanna find? I wanna find the rate of change of volume. So that's DVDT. Seriously, do you hear this music? I think I'm gonna kill myself. This makes me wanna kill myself or stab this pen in my eyes. All right, so anyway, step three. What's the formula? Volume of a right circular cylinder, who remembers? Okay, this is like a soda can. I like this cup that I have. One more sip of tea, hold on. No caffeine, of course, because my life sucks. Guys, I'm less than 11 weeks away from a cup of coffee and counting. All right, so anyway, here's my cylinder, okay? Minus the handle, ignore the handle. But volume, you wouldn't calculate the handle because you're filling it, okay? So I always tell you when you think of volume, if you have trouble remembering formulas, Always do the area of the basic shape on the top of the bottom. So what's the area of a circle? Remember Sakao, cherry pie is delicious and apple pies are two. Very good. So pi r squared, that's the area of the circle. And then I have to fill it up. So that's times the what? Times the what, if I fill it up, that's times the height. Okay, so step four. Take the derivative of this, okay? Well, I have an R times an H. So what rule is that in derivative land? Some of you asked me about this on text message. Oh, and by the way, I apologize. I haven't really been keeping up with your messages and your work on Canvas. I'm still trying to learn how to use it. I'm gonna work on that tomorrow. So hopefully we'll get on top of that tomorrow. I've been doing really good with Remind and Canvas are kind of like, I signed on yesterday and I was like, oh my God, I forgot about a little bit. You guys sending work on Canvas. Okay. So this is the practical. First times the root of the second plus the second times the root of the first. So what's the derivative of one V? One DV DT. Well, that's awesome because that's what I want to find. Then it's the first times what's the root of one H? DH DT plus the second H times what's the root of the first? Two pi r's, dr dt. Remember doing that? You bring the pi for the ride, you don't leave it out. All right, so I'm just gonna clean this up just a little bit because as a math person, it drives me a little nuck and fuss to see this h here. I'm sorry, plus two pi h r's dr dt. They always put things in alphabetical order in math if you're wondering how to figure that out. All right, now we plug in what we know to solve for what we want to find. I don't know dv dt. I know r is nine. I know dh is negative four. I have two pi's and the height is 15 and the radius is nine and dr dt is positive two. Put it all together and what do you get? Step six, negative 36 pies. No, holy crap, R squared. Be careful, Sakaro. that's nine squared. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Somebody yell at me. Yell at me through the camera. Sakaro, it's squared times, what did I say, four? Negative four. This is why you should not do calculus at 12 o'clock at night. Is negative 324 pi's. Again, what was my mistake? It's pi r squared. I wrote just nine, forgot to square it. Plus, now this is 30 times 18. I think that's 54 pi's, right? 540 pi's, because it's 30. All right, so what's 540 minus 324? And you get something like 216 pies. If you have a calculator at home or a calculator on the computer that can do pies, you can either leave your answer like this, or you can literally write 216 times pi. 
and tell me, remember three or four decimal places, 678.584. And that's volume, so it's inches cubed per second. And I don't care which answer you give on this. All right, my darlings. Okay, let's do the ladder. Ladder, ladder. Okay, ladder slipping down a wall. Oh boy. Ladder 17 foot long. The top is slipping at a constant rate of four feet per second. How fast is the bottom of the ladder moving along the ground when the bottom is eight foot? from the wall. So let's start with part A. And let's start with a picture. So here we go. Here's my ladder wall picture. The wall must be at a right angle. Otherwise it would be like the leaning tower of Pisa. Here's the wall. Here's the ladder. And the ladder is 17 foot long. And this side is the what of the right triangle? It's the hypotenuse, it's the longest side. So this is gonna be my C, okay? Do they tell us how big the wall is? No. They tell us that the bottom of the ladder is eight foot from the wall up. So if this is the bottom of the ladder, then this is eight foot from the wall. So that's my A or my B, okay? I want to know how fast is the bottom of the ladder moving. So I want to know the rate of change of who. If this is moving and it's slipping down, it's changing which side? The bottom, B. Very good. So I actually want to know DB, DT. Yes, yes. So step one, draw a picture and label it. So we'll call this side A. Why am I doing ABC, by the way? Do I have anything about an angle yet? No. So this is we're not getting tricky with it. If it's just your ABCs and your one, two, threes, it's just good old Pythagoras. Step two. We know we want to find. What do we know? We know C is 17 feet. We know B is eight feet. Can I find A? Hell yeah. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? side work. So I have a squared plus eight squared equals 17 squared. What is this? 289? Right? Help a girl out. 289 minus 64 is 225. What is that? 15 squared? Right? A squared equals 225, so A is 15. Does that sound about right? Yeah, that's a Pythagorean triple. 8, 15, 17. Very good. All right, we also know rates of change here, right? We know that the top of the ladder is slipping at a constant rate of 4 feet. So as it's slipping, again, if you want to know positive or negative, think about... As the ladder's falling down, is it getting slower or faster? It's getting faster, very good. So it's slipping at a rate of four feet per second. That's the rate of change of what? A, so we're gonna call that DA, DT. Okay, four feet per second. And then they wanna know how fast is the bottom. So they wanna know the rate of change of what up B? DB, DT. Okay? All right, so we set Pythagorean theorem. That's our formula. This is part A, by the way, dBdt. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So let's do the derivative. What's the derivative of A squared? That's right, it's 2A dA dt. And what's the derivative of B squared? 2B, or not 2B, that is the question. dB dt. And what's the derivative of C squared? 2C dc dt holy cannolis all right let's plug in what we know we know a is 15 and we know da dt is 4. we know b oh well i'll get that in a second we know b is 8 feet and we want to know db dt what's c 17 what do i do with dc dt 
Is there a rate of change of the ladder? Is the ladder changing in length? No, so we say it's zero. Or you're just here, remember I did it in the, um, when I went over the homework problem. I actually set this equal to 17 squared, which is 289, and then what's the derivative of a constant? It's just zero. Either way that you look at it, whether you say the derivative of 289 is zero, or the rate of change of the ladder is zero, zero times anything is zero. This is gonna disappear and go to zero. Okay, so you remember at this point, I, I forgot to do it, I should have done it first. Everybody's multiplying by two, so if you divide by two, the twos drop. Okay, so I'm left with 60 plus eight dB dt is equal zero. And then how do I move this the 60 over? You subtract it. What's the opposite of multiplying by eight? Divided by eight. So negative 60 divided by eight is negative 7.5. And what's your units of measurement? Feet per second. I'm sitting here looking at this and I'm thinking for a second. I said that this is getting faster, the rate of change is increasing. Yeah, that makes sense. This is increasing, this rate of change, because as it goes down, it's gonna go fall faster because of gravity. And then this one is decreasing. Why is this one decreasing? Because eventually the ladder is gonna do what as it slips down? It's gonna stop. Okay, so it actually slows down and stops and hits zero. Very good. Okay, so that's why this one's decreasing. All right, so part B. Let's get tricky with it. Na 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 Getting tricky with it. All right, let's look at part B. Find the rate, another rate of change. Yay! At which the angle between the ladder and the base of the house is changing when the base is eight foot from the wall. So I'm gonna call this angle theta. And I don't just wanna know theta. I wanna know what's the rate of change of theta. So for part B, I want to know d theta dt. So it doesn't change though. Everything stays the same so far. So I can use everything that I have. So I'm gonna go like this. That's all part A work, right? Let's talk about part, part B. Remember, we're getting tricky with it. Some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. But remember, crack is wax, so say no to drugs, okay? All right, so I've been using tan right? Because I like opposite over adjacent. Okay. Opposite over adjacent. So I know that tan theta is the side that's opposite, which is 15 over adjacent, which is eight. Okay. So I actually know that tan theta is 15 over eight. Now this is the formula I'm going to use. Tan theta is the side that's opposite over the side that's adjacent, A over B. So this is my new formula. Let's take the derivative. What's the derivative of tan? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, secant squared theta. I just took the derivative of theta, so I write d theta dt, and I'm realizing I'm totally gonna run out of room here. So you know what? I'm gonna move this work down here. You ready? Secant squared theta, d theta dt. All right, this is the what rule. If it's set up as a fraction, it's the what rule? Quotient rule, very good. So it's the bottom times the root of the top, which is just da dt, minus the top times the root of the bottom, all over your mom squared, the bottom squared. Okay, so that's step four, take the derivative. Okay, step five, plug in who we know. All right, let's do secant squared theta for a second. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is what over what? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Who's adjacent? Eight over the hypotenuse, 17. So if secant's the reciprocal, then what do I do to eight over 17? I flip it. And it's squared, so now I'm gonna square it. 
that's how you get 289 over 64. So for secant squared theta, I'm gonna write 289 over 64. I wanna solve for d theta dt. My b, what'll b? Is eight. My da dt is four minus my a is 15. My db dt is what I solved in part a, negative 7.5, right? All over b squared. Holy cannolis. I'm going to run out of room now. So we ready? 289 over 64, d theta dt. I'm going to have 32 and then 15 times negative 7.5. Remember, multiply it f first and then distribute the negative is minus a negative 112.5, which makes it a plus. All right, so I'm gonna turn this over. 289 over 64. D theta dt, and I have 32 plus 112.5, because it was minus a negative, over 64. So you ready? I'm getting 144.5. And what's the last step? What's the opposite of dividing by 289 over 64? I'm sorry, the opposite of multiplying by it is dividing it. But if you divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. So if you have a good enough calculator accessible, you can just do divided by a fraction. Just make sure you put parentheses around it. Or you can do multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so d theta dt. I actually like this one. And he's snoring again. It's 0.5 or one half. And <laughs> the units of measurement is stay rad, dude rads per second that is a mic drop ladies and gentlemen this is all this is it you literally have two problems for worksheet for video lesson number five and i'm going to quiz grade it okay so please try very hard please try to hand it in it's due by friday okay so your homework is the worksheet For video lesson five, numbers one and two. All right, my dear darlings, it's been real. I hope you enjoyed my uh, husband's crappy music selection with the side of him snoring and all this calculus. Na, 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 na. All right, anyway, I miss you guys. Hope all is well. Take care, brush your hair.